Hi, welcome to the Plant Transformation Core Research Facility here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. We have the ability to transform all the major crops of Nebraska. That would include corn, wheat, sorghum, and soybeans. In addition, we can transform the model crops like tobacco and Arabidopsis. So what happens here is the researcher brings his gene, or we can synthesize the gene in the lab. We put it into the desired plant species, and then give it back to the researcher for further analysis or do the analysis ourselves. So what we're going to look at today is how we genetically engineer soybeans to introduce new traits. This big apparatus here is called a hood. And what this hood does is it pulls the air through a HEPA filter and blows it out towards me, creating a sterile environment in which to work. To start our um, transformation process, we use agrobacteria to transform our soybeans. Agrobacteria is a soil bacteria that's found in nature and was discovered in about the 1900s to have a really unique ability. This bacteria has the ability to insert its DNA into plant cells and to modify the plant so it makes food for the bacteria to continue to grow. And so what scientists discovered that they could do is that they could replace those genes that made food for the bacteria and put their own genes in for whatever they wanted to do in the new plant. I have some seeds here. I place these sterile seeds on these plates containing media, which contains all the elements necessary for its growth. After five days, this is what the germinating seeds look like. Now I'm going to make seven to twelve horizontal slices. So here I have a bunch of wounded cotyledons. And then here's the agrobacteria that has been resuspended in our co culture media. And I'm going to pour it over the cotyledons. and allow them to sit for about 30 minutes. The bacteria has started to attach to the cotyledons. Now the agrobacteria is attracted by compounds that are generated from wounded plant cells. We move the cotyledons, wounded side down, in contact with the filter paper. The filter paper contains the co-culture media, and we allow these in, uh, cotyledons to remain on these co-culture plates for three days. During those three days, the agrobacteria is going to do its thing. It's going to insert its little piece of DNA into the plant cell. After those three days of co-culture has passed, we now move these cotyledons to our selection plates. This media contains a compound, a chemical that would normally kill plant cells. We've introduced into these cotyledons with our agrobacteria a new gene that will allow it to grow despite the, the chemical that would normally kill it. Also in this media is a compound or a hormone that will allow a single cell to grow into a whole new plant. If the single cell contains that new DNA, all the cells in the new plant will contain that new DNA. After two weeks, you can see what has happened to the cotyledons. We've started to see a cluster of new shoots being produced. The hormone, or the plant growth regulator, in this media has altered the, course of, the normal course of development of the cotyledon. So instead of producing a single big plant, we've produced a cluster of buds. You can see here that we have many new plants or new shoots growing from the single cotyledon. And eventually, you will see the start of new shoots growing out of this cluster of shoots. These shoots are our potential transformants. Because the gene gets inserted randomly into the plant genome, and we have no control as of yet where it goes, it could be inserted into a spot that is bad. It could 
affect the yield of the plant, it could affect the growth and development of the plant. And so we need to make multiple plants from different transgenic events to pick the ones where we don't have any um, effect on yield or plant growth and development. So one of the ways that we screen for, trans, for the transformed plant, we look for the presence of the herbicide resistance gene. Now I'm going to apply this to the, the soybean leaf. I'm going to apply the herbicide. Now in five to seven days after application, if the plant does not contain the herbicide gene, the leaf will look like this. Okay? If the plant does contain the herbicide gene, it will look like this. You can see there's no damage. So this plant contains the new gene, the selectable marker gene, the bar gene, and also the gene of interest. This gene does not. What you see in the greenhouse is not necessarily what you see in field conditions. And field conditions is where you want to know what the plant is going to do.